lift your hands and declare it to the King of Kings. Just lift your hands, open your mouth and bless the Lord this afternoon. Lift your hands, open up your mouth and adore Him. Bless His name right where you're standing. Lift your voice and magnify the Lord. Magnify His name. He's Jehovah God. Is Jehovah Elion, the God Most High. Lift your voice and magnify your King. Bless His name. In the mood of worship, open your mouth and exalt Him. Open your mouth, make sure you're not quiet. Bless His great name. Bless His name. voices and the keyboard you will never you are the lord you are the lord you are the lord yeah. you remain the same you will never never change afternoon we celebrate your great name we lift you high we thank you because you are in our midst we thank you because your presence is here glorify your name Lord Jesus touch every life in this place let the sick be healed let the oppressed be delivered let there be recovery of sight to the blind. Let your children be edified today by the instance of your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Remain standing. I want to prophesy on a few people. I just sense an anointing to make this declaration. I want you to believe in the power of prophecy. The Bible says he sent his word. And it healed them and delivered them from their destruction. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 4, verse 2, it said, But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. The Lord asked me to say to someone here, yeah, probably you've been at a place where it seems like you are forgotten, you've been at a low place. It's, you've been waiting for divine visitation for a while, but it has not happened as you expected. But because you have kept your faith in God, 
and because you've held on to the lord till this time the lord asked me to declare that scripture to you he said unto you that fear my name the son of righteousness will arise that in the name of jesus because you came for this service may the son of righteousness the king of kings and the lord of lords arise on your behalf arise on your behalf this season in the name of jesus christ when god arises for you he brings beauty over your life he says arise shine for your light has come and the glory of god is risen above you i declare that after this service may everyone look at your life and see the radiance of the glory of god around you may they see the radiance of the glory of god around you in the name of jesus christ this week the lord has been speaking to me this is about somebody here it may not be for everybody but i'm, I'm making deliberate prophetic words the bible says in second samuel chapter 9 he spoke about a man called mephibosheth the bible says he was in a place called lodiba lodiba means a place of no pasture a dry land that was the son of a king or the grandson of a king and then david arose one day and said who is in the house of saul that is remaining that i want to show kindness to and the bible declares that mephibosheth was brought to david and he said that i will restore to you all that was yours and all that belongs to your father the lord is asking me to declare a word of restoration over somebody you may have been in your lodiba season but by the power that is in the name of jesus God is bringing you out of Lodiba to a place of plenty. I say God is bringing you out of Lodiba to a place of plenty. You are stepping into a place of abundance. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to prophesy that word restoration seven times for a family here. That in the name of Jesus Christ, as we come to an, as we bring this month to an end, everything that was stolen from your life including your joy your peace including every and anything around your life i declare restoration 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 in the name of jesus christ Do you believe that word? I'm saying it again. By next Sunday, there will be at least three to four people here that will come back with a tangible testimony and evidence that cannot be denied of the power of restoration at work in your life. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. everything that was stolen is restored right now i mean before you even leave this service there will be reports coming to you that that which was stolen from your life or that which was forcefully taken from you is coming back to you i can't hear you in the name of jesus christ i want you to pray in the spirit for one minute if you believe this word crystallize it over your life by prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, let this be your season of restoration. Let this be your season of transition from Lodiba, from a place of no pasture, from a dry land to a place of abundance, to a place of plenty. It says you took us through the fire and through the water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. You brought us to the wealthy place. in jesus mighty name we have prayed thank you father your life will never remain the same after tonight the bible says they go from strength to strength each one that appears before god in zion you have come tonight to receive another measure of strength another measure of grace 
for some of you have come so that God can increase the capacity of your wine skin in other words your spirit man you have come to receive a word that will bring a total change and a turn around in your life how many of you are ready for another level may the Lord measure a thousand cubits over somebody today in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated God bless you hallelujah holy words long preserved for our work in this world there is sound with God's own heart oh let the ancient world Words of life, words of hope, give us strength, help us cope in this world where we roam. Oh, let the ancient words sing. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh, let the ancient words sing. Sing it one more time. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh, let the ancient seconds i want you to lift your voice as you pray in the spirit and ask the lord for a word a word for your life in this season ask him to speak to you let a word that is relevant to your life relevant to the season where you are come to you by the power of his spirit everybody lift your voice and pray I can't hear you. Lift your voice and pray. Sheda provos capra hate la magrose. Vebro si bahato ria hasa borona. Le baharo sabaka si bahato brahes kapa brahadenos. Lord, my heart is open. Visit me by the power of your word. Speak a word in due season that will bring comfort that will bring a change and a turn around a word that applies to my life to my circumstance to the situations around me in this season a word that will catapult me from where I am to where I ought to be make sure you talk to him everywhere whether you are inside or outside or following online make sure you speak to the Lord Eda basha prata mande do brohos kaprahat. Deha barakasi baranosa. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Hallelujah. I welcome you to Pneumatic and I trust the Lord that He has given me a tongue to speak His word in due season to every heart that is open tonight. The word of God remains the number one solution, the number one answer to all the challenges of life. It is ancient, but always true, ever fresh, always relevant to every season of your life. Isn't it amazing that we are several of us scattered around this auditorium and listening online? Different expectations different seasons in our life and our existence yet one word can come that applies to every one of us that's the power of the word of god and that's why the bible calls it the word of life my desire and prayer tonight is that everyone here present will live with a word in the name of jesus what you need to catapult you from where you are to where you ought to be is the word of god and the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet when he spoke not when he prayed for me not when he laid hands on me when he spoke the word to me more than just the information that you will receive as you listen and your heart is open it is the entrance of the word that brings understanding that is revelation indeed that comes into your spirit man and generates the energy of God that is capable of taking you from where you are to where God wants you to be. And I declare that after tonight you will see yourself at another dimension as far as the operation of the spirit of God is concerned. Another dimension of grace, another dimension of glory, and another dimension of strength. In Jesus mighty name. Are we set tonight? All right. I want to assure you, listen. <laughs> After tonight, what you are going to hear will change your life. Amen. Believe what I'm telling you. What you are about to hear tonight will change your life. For some of you, it will answer long overdue questions in your mind. Some of you, after this night, you will be hungry to want to listen to the sermon again and again. And I... I would crave your indulgence to do that the bible says faith comes by hearing hearing is present continuous it means you need to keep hearing until faith is activated faith is a spiritual force it is not wish faith is a reality when it crystallizes in your heart there is a level of conviction that it builds inside of you about the word the power and integrity of god and that is what you need as the raw material for your next level i want to assure you again that you didn't waste your time for coming today and you will get the full dividends of your coming into the house of god tonight in the name of jesus are you ready understanding god's financial systems that's the teaching tonight understanding god's financial systems Someone like someone's life is about to change. <laughs> someone's life is about to go from glory to glory. That the advantage that this word will bring to your life would dislodge every advantage that the enemy has had in your life prior to this time. I didn't hear your amen. So I want you to pay attention. Attention is the price you pay in the school of wisdom. I want you to pay attention. Make sure your heart is open. Make sure you are not just listening with your ears, but listen with your heart. All right? So that the light that is deposited in the word of God will come to address the areas of your life. For some of you, it will come as a rebuke. For some of you, it will come to provoke you unto righteousness, to provoke you unto good works. By the way, let me celebrate Pastor Mrs. Barua, Hanato Barua, who is with us. Please give her a big God bless you. Thank you very much, ma. 
Thank you so much for coming, Reverend Adi. Thank you so much for coming, the chaplain of St. Stephen's Military Church. Thank you. And also, of course, Pastor Moses. God bless you. Thank you so much, sir. Amen. Understanding God's financial systems. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. We are going to read a few scriptures and then um, go deeply into the teaching for today. At some point we may have to do a lot of writings. So those of you who have your writing materials, thank you so much for always wanting to take down notes as you listen to the word of God being preached and taught. So I want you to be ready. We will do a lot of writing. But... The assignment tonight, listen, the assignment is not just to give you another teaching that you will write on your notes and listen and go back. Tonight's message is a message of deliverance. Did you hear what I said? It's a message of deliverance. The word that you are going to hear tonight is coming with the power and the force of the Spirit of God to recalibrate distorted mindsets. Mindsets that are not in line with the word of God concerning the area of finances will fall down tonight. God will give you a new orientation and the wisdom that you will receive tonight will catapult you to the, your next place of abundance and your next place of enjoying all the financial benefits that resides in the kingdom and is allocated for your glory. Somebody say amen to that. So I want you to really open your heart to listen tonight and be ready for what God is about to do. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verses 9. Let's begin from there. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became what? That you through his poverty might become, might become rich. So it is part and parcel, one of the package that grace has brought for us in Christ Jesus is the divine ability at work in you as a believer that is able to take you away from a place of poverty to a place of riches, to a place of abundance, to a place of plenty. We thank God for the work of salvation which was achieved when the Lord Jesus died on the cross and was raised for our justification but there are several other benefits that the work of salvation has brought apart from justification that you are declared righteous before god there are other benefits that are accrued in the work of salvation that a believer must not be denied of one of them is healing another one is deliverance but particularly my assignment tonight is to major on the area of financial prosperity. And I came to tell you today, regardless of the lies that the enemy has sold to you, regardless of the situations around your life, that it is truly the will of God for you to prosper, for you to live in financial abundance. That financial abundance is not a sin. It is a heritage for the people of God. If you can hear me, say Amen. Contrary to anything you are going through, let God be true and let all men be liars. Some people feel, or oh, it has been taught, you know, the problem with, that is the reason why when God calls a man or a woman of God into ministry, our job, respectfully speaking, is to labor in the truth of God's word and allow the Holy Spirit bring us to a point of perfection as touching the revelation the fullness of the revelation of jesus christ otherwise if we become limited in the amount of truths from the word of god it is possible that we can mentor the people that are under us or teach the people under us in line with our limitation so if i don't believe in financial prosperity or perhaps if i have not seen that happen in my life if I have not had the experience of coming into abundance as touching finances, it has a way of affecting my convictions. It has a way of affecting my faith. 
And if hair is not taken, that is the same thing I want to pass down to you. And as a result, if I am stranded and broke as a preacher, I will raise a congregation that is stranded and what? Broke. Though they are saved and heavily bound, but earthly relevant because of this lacking of revelation. Are you with me at all? And that is the reason why today's teaching is going to be centered around giving you a holistic understanding as touching the area of finances. And also so that the belief system that the world has sold to us will be brought side by side with the truth of God's word so that we can make adjustments that will make us ready to enjoy this wonderful privilege that Jesus has provided for us. He says, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that through his poverty you might become rich. Apostle, if it's true that Jesus Christ died, and through the work of grace, he has brought us to that place where we can go from poverty into wealth, why am I poor? Why am I living in lack? Why am I broke? Why do I keep struggling around my finances? I've been serving God for many years or I've been giving constantly because that was what I was taught. Why am I not seeing the dividends? Today, you will be brought to the full understanding of God's financial systems. And I want to, I want to assure you that if you take these truths that you will hear tonight and apply it in your life, it may not be instantly. But definitely, you will go from a place of not enough to a place of much more than enough. You know, there are four levels of abundance. I used to say there were three levels, but I discovered there is a fourth one. The first level is not enough. You have, but it's not enough. The next level is just enough. Just one car for yourself and your family one bedroom flat all you have will only take care of your immediate needs but as far as your vision your purpose for life is concerned what you have is not enough to sponsor it that means you are not supposed to rest in that place you need to grow from just enough to more than enough you have more than enough for yourself that can extend to others but if you are really really ready to listen tonight and contend there is yet another place that is more than enough. It is called much more than enough. The God we serve is called the all-sufficient God. That's the meaning of the word El Shaddai. The word El Shaddai, the best illustration for the name El Shaddai is as it is used in the Hebrew. Think of a dog, a mother dog, what they call a female dog, a bitch who is a nursing mother with a lot of breasts and then she has one puppy and the puppy wants to suck and while the puppy is sucking on one all the other seven or six or five are dripping out with milk so the puppy becomes confused where do I suck from now that what are, this, this illustration huh, is the literal interpretation of El Shaddai that's what it means the multi-breasted one much more than enough it is when you have much more than enough that you can advance the kingdom with your resources that you can affect humanity there are several things if you look at our world today one of the major in fact the the sustainable development goals of the united nations out of the 17 the first one is to bring the world to a place where there is zero hunger. And zero hunger simply means poverty. Uh, hunger simply means poverty. My prayer for you in the name of Jesus Christ. After tonight's teaching, God will take you from not enough to just enough. And if you are just enough, He will take you to more than enough. And if you are already at more than enough, get ready to enter into much more than enough. In the name of Jesus Christ. Another scripture, Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22. 
the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. Note that the word blessing is in singular. Just the same way it's in singular in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. In singular. And we're going to understand what that blessing is. It says, The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. So what is supposed to make you rich is not how hard you walk hard work is good what is supposed to make you rich is not how smart you are it is good it is true to is good to be smart it is good to possess wisdom understanding as touching the things of this life but the bible says what makes you truly rich is called the blessing of the lord you know the bible says that any man that does not work should not eat but it is the blessing of god that makes you rich it is not your work Am I saying you should not work? Yes, you should. But beyond your work, there is an added advantage. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord is a spiritual reality that is conferred on the, by the Lord on an individual that is capable, according to scripture, to make that man rich. And the Bible says with it comes no sorrow. Proverbs 13, 22, the third scripture Proverbs 13, 22. A good man. Here's the, the Bible's definition of a good man. Can we read if you, are, if, if you are here, especially if you are a man? Can we all read together at the count of three? It's on the screen. Especially if you are a man, let your voice be louder. In the name of Jesus Christ. One, two, three. Let's read. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. But the wealth of the sinner is stored up. Man, thank you for reading loud. The Bible says the definition of a good man is that he leaves an inheritance. Not for his children, no, for his children's children. This simply means transgenerational wealth. Transgenerational abundance. Abundance that can outlive you to the next and even the second generation. Somebody is going to enter that economy after tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. I know the way you say your amen, I know you have been used to lack for a long time. But I brought a prophetic word to you today. That after your understanding tonight, you will step into that economy. Some of you, your life will produce wealth that will extend to even your third generation. I'm speaking it over your life after tonight in the name of Jesus. And finally, Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 26. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verses 26. Understanding God's financial systems. He said, For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight, but to the sinner... He gives the work of gathering and collecting. That includes those who are concerned only about looting. Those who feel that looting is the only means to wealth. He says he gives the work of gathering and collecting to who? To the sinner. That he may give to him who is good before God. He said this also is vanity and grasping for the wind. That's the reason why this scripture is coming immediately after Proverbs chapter 13 verse 22. At the end of Proverbs 13 22, it says that the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. And now in this scripture, the Bible says that the man that is good before God, in other words, a believer, God gives him the power to possess wisdom, knowledge, and joy. And then to the sinner, the labor of gathering and collecting. At the end of the day, all that work is meant to gather together and live for the man that is good for the man that has obtained wisdom and knowledge from god so by that wisdom he is able to he's able to lay hold of that which the sinner has gathered that's why the bible says wisdom is a principal thing therefore get wisdom and in all you're getting get understanding 
And God will grant us that wisdom tonight in Jesus' name. Alright, let's, let's go deep into the teaching tonight. Firstly, it is important for us to understand that as touching resources, as far as this life is concerned, your existence, your interaction will always be within the availability of resources that are at your reach. There are three primary kinds of resources that we will always interact with living and existing on this earth. There is financial resources, there are material resources, and then there is human resource. Human resource is a combination of several things. The intellect, the energy, the strength, and everything, every service that a human being can provide. All of that is coupled together into what we call human resources. But you see, it is important to understand that financial resources largely affect the other two. When we talk about material resources, we are talking about physical things like land, like um, what? Products that we use, consumable products that we use on a daily basis. Every of these kinds of resources and even the human resources that can be employed, all of it hangs around the availability of financial resources. That is the importance or that is the reason why we need to look at understanding God's financial system. Financial resources has to do with money and other related resources. Money. Somebody say money. Don't worry, you will not go to hell. Shout money good many of us don't like any teaching or any preaching that talks about money some of us only like messages about missionary and discipleship and evangelism we are talking about money today say amen, amen. i wrote down something here i want to read it for you just listen money is an important subject matter that every believer should not be ignorant about as it is the legal tender for economic transactions that is recognized globally. That is the reason why money is a very important subject matter. It is the legal tender for economic transactions. Every kind of transaction you will make as a man on this earth largely is, uh, uh, surrounds the availability of money. Hence, the importance of money, particularly the understanding of it to a believer. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 7 verse 12, it says wisdom is a defense as money is a defense. So wisdom is not the only defense, money is a defense. There is a level of protection that money can offer for you. And I hope you know protection connotes preservation. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 10 verse 19 that money answers all things. Now you see, there, there are two understandings from that verse. Ecclesiastes 10, there. I don't know if I should, I should bring it to our notice. Okay, let me just talk about it. You know, the Bible says there that money answers everything. Give us in King James, please. There, there are two, two kinds of understandings that you can get from this scripture about money. It says money answered all things. Firstly, it literally means that money is largely the solution for many of the challenges, the situations, and the circumstances of life. That is true. You will not believe if I tell you. That if you were blessed financially, more than 70% of your problems would have been met. 70% is A, isn't it? It's the truth. The second meaning is that money answers. When you say money answers to everything, it means that money answers to. That means in further understanding of money and financial systems as a man that the amount of financial resources that will be available to you or simply put the money 
that will be available to you is based on the level of understanding that you have concerning financial systems as far as being on this earth is concerned you know it says money answers to all things so money will answer to the man that understands the language of money the man that understands the systems that can make for availability and sustainability of financial resources if you have that understanding money can answer to you do you understand what i'm saying and that's the reason why money is a very important subject matter that we must understand money and financial resources are also part of the indices for measuring or quantifying prosperity it's one of the indices for measuring or quantifying prosperity money you know the bible says in third john verse 2 chapter 1 of third john verse 2 it says i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper there are at least about five levels of prosperity as prescribed by scripture firstly there is spiritual prosperity there's the health of your spiritual life and your relationship with god then there is financial prosperity there is physical or bodily prosperity there is social or relational prosperity and several of them so but you see that financial prosperity which is targeted mainly at the availability of financial resources is one of the indices for measuring prosperity so one of the ways you will know that you are truly prospering not the only way but one of the indices to quantify the level of prosperity in the life of a man one of it is the financial resources available in that man's life it's a sad truth but it's the truth there are many things that will not prosper in your life if there is lack of money do you believe what i'm telling you do you know that you are sitting in money do you know that money can magnify or amplify the availability of the presence of god within a place or oh, somebody's about to stone me for that but listen you see imagine this service without the keyboard without this mic without this building even if we are high in prayers i hope you know the sun will so shine on our head that if they tell you the presence of god is there you will not believe is that true so money can play a very important role in the availability of the presence of god in a place where two or three are gathered even if it means they have to pay transport to be there in my name he says what i'm there think of anything anything that you can do or achieve in this life you cannot you almost cannot isolate finances from it and the earlier we understand the financial systems of the kingdom in this end time as the church the better for us because one of the weapons of the kingdom of darkness is poverty and it's only when you have tasted of poverty you will know how deadly and dangerous that weapon is but after tonight god is relocating someone from that place of poverty to a place of prosperity if you are saying him and say it better understanding god's financial systems research has shown that the three or top three problems that many believers encounter as far as their existence in life is concerned the three top problems that believers encounter regularly as far as existing and living on this earth is concerned number one financial problems number two relationship problems marriage or family number three health problems you know what the remaining two largely depends on the first one you know those days we used to sing a song when jesus in the family happy happy home there's a second stanza to that when there is money in the family there can be happiness too joy comes from god but money produces happiness did you hear what i'm saying yes oh yes money can produce happiness 
You know the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord, if you have not tasted it, you will not know. There is a level of ease that money can bring to your life. There is a level of stress, mental, psychological stress that can be elevated because there is availability. And I'm not talking about, when I talk about money today, don't begin to think about having lux, you know, a luxurious, uh, uh, extravagant lifestyle like we see on social media these days. Those things are not true when you put it side by side with the model of the life of a believer as the scripture reveals to us. Those things are not true. Most of those things you see on social media are even fake sometimes. I'm talking about having enough that keeps you comfortable and helps you to prosper as touching the will of God for your life and affecting nations for the kingdom. There is a level of ease money can bring. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh yes, there is. I remember I was listening to Apostle Johnson Suleiman and he said there was a time in his life where he used to criticize pastors who had private jets. He felt that it was a waste of money. That there are poor people in church. And you know Jesus said, the poor you will always have with me. The poor people will not end though. Till Jesus comes, there will, will always be poor people. Till we will go to heaven. Until we leave and go to heaven. As far as you are on this earth, there will always be Jesus said, the poor you will have always with you. So he was always criticizing and all of that. And then, you know, most times when you talk like that rashly, the Holy Spirit will be quiet. And then he said one time he was to travel for a meeting in an African country. When he got to Lagos, his flight was cancelled. And the conference had started. He had to go through road. Passed through about four countries. He, when he arrived, it was the last day of the program. He went and shared grace with them. Another time, he traveled and came into Nigeria on a Saturday. He was in Lagos. He had a flight from Lagos to Benin. They delayed it till 6 p.m. and they canceled it by 6 p.m. And he had Sunday service, you know, in Aochi, Edo State. So he had to go by road, night journey. He arrived by 3 a.m. And you know, traveling on <laughs> Nigerian roads. So if somebody who is listening from Dubai or from London or from America, no problem. But in Nigeria, we are trusting God. God is still, the part of Nigerians is still shining. Right? You understand what I'm saying? Especially if you are from Adama State, yeah. Sorry. Amen and amen. That's why you have to contend for financial abundance. Oh. Some of this road, don't wait for government to do it. Some of it, you, you people are the ones that will do it. Oh. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? He arrived 3 a.m. And service was going to be at a few hours. He said when he got to church, he was so tired. He had to manage himself so that they will not say, Pastor needs help. Or Pastor is possessed. After the service, as he entered the house, he just crashed on the floor. He said his wife told him, come and rest, rest. And then while he was there, you know, moaning about the experience, the Holy Spirit came and said, do you say private jet is not good? He said, hey! Amen. I'm telling you the truth. There are many families that have fallen apart and it's not supposed to be so. Some problems that escalated, that brought fam or that, that they separated families, if you check, the root was money. Yesterday, I was reading something online about um, these people who go to pick from those beans. What they call them, scavengers. I was reading, I was so touched. I was almost in tears. About a woman, you know, they, they were interviewing one of them, a woman in Abuja. Whose husband died and left her with seven children. And she lives on scavenging. You know what it means? Going to dust bin, you know, waste bin areas, dump sites, to pick things that are used to sell. How much do they make a day? Sometimes 1,000 if they are lucky. Sometimes 4,000 in a week. How do you feed, clothe, and take to school seven children in that state? And you tell me money is not important? The Bible says even the streets in heaven are made of gold. 
That means God is saying, enjoy all the financial resources that is available for you by reason of the death of Jesus Christ. Don't come to heaven and regret that there was much you would have enjoyed. And you will not regret. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you again and again that your life will not be lived in regret or in poverty. But today, God will open to you the wisdom and the understanding that will give you access to abundance of finances. In the name of Jesus Christ. So money is really important. Understanding God's financial systems. Let's try to define the word since systems. Let's try to define the word systems. Systems. It is important to note that God is a God of systems. God is systemic in his operations. Everything in the kingdom of God has been diversified and demarcated into systems. So let's understand what the word system is. System. I said it is a set of principles. A set of principles or procedures. A set of principles or procedures according to which something is done. A set of principles or procedures according to which something is done according to which something is done the principles the procedures the patterns that govern the accomplishment of a particular thing system is also called an organized approach an organized approach either towards solving a problem or, or towards achieving an outcome system is also called an organized approach an organized approach another definition again it is a generated formula a generated formula that make for a predictable outcome generated formula that make for a predictable outcome in other words laws that you can follow and then the outcome is what is expected principles procedures guidelines what else what other word can we use huh somebody help me now english people eh? strategy thank you very much strategies the beautiful thing about systems are it is no respecter of race of tribe of skin color of religion of language or of ethnic descent it is no respecter of any sociological or physical stratification anybody that applies those strategies or those guidelines will get the desired outcome anybody and I'm happy that God created his kingdom like that. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, I believe in verse 13, 12 or 13. It says, but the same Lord is rich unto all that call upon his name. The same Lord. So what you are going to learn, the financial systems of God's kingdom, is such that any one of us, if you truly believe, can apply these systems or work with these systems. And you are able to... To activate a level of financial abundance in your life. Now write again. God's financial systems. Let's define that now. God's financial systems. We have defined financial resources. We have defined systems. Let's also define God's financial systems. God's financial systems, right? God's financial systems are a combination of laws. A combination of laws. Principles. Principles. Of forces. Engaged together. That is capable of bringing a believer 
engage together that is capable of bringing a believer into true and lasting wealth that is capable of bringing a believer into true and lasting wealth and financial abundance God's financial systems I take it again are a combination of laws principles of forces engaged together that is capable of bringing a believer into true and lasting wealth and financial abundance God's financial systems are a combination of laws principles of forces engaged together that is capable of bringing a believer into true and lasting wealth and financial abundance a combination of forces not just one a combination of laws not just one that means that just knowing and applying one alone does not mean you will have the expected outcome is that true you engage the forces together and when they are carefully engaged together it brings a believer into lasting wealth and financial abundance the Bible says in Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 God was speaking to the children of Israel as they got ready to cross the Jordan River and move into the promised land and here's what he said to them he said but you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto your fathers he gives power to get wealth somebody say power to get wealth it comes from who it comes from who it comes from who very good in isaiah chapter 48 in verse 17 one powerful scripture that you'll have to put at the back of your mind in fact business people should rejoice when this scripture is read he said thus says the lord thy redeemer the holy one of israel i am the lord thy god which teacheth thee to what to profit so for you to profit for you to prosper for you to excel financially the bible says god is able to teach you the previous scripture said he gives you power to get wealth now the bible is saying he teaches you to profit and he leads you in the way that you should go imagine when god is the one teaching you as touching your business imagine when the principles you apply for running your organization or for running your private business is anchored upon the teachings of the holy ghost there are many things you will escape there are a lot of fraudulent activities that you will escape there are a lot of losses you will escape because he says i the lord teach thee to profit if god is not interested in your in your walking in financial abundance and prosperity there's no way that this scripture will be available in the bible he teaches you to profit another scripture i want you to look at deuteronomy 15 verse 6 sorry we have a lot of scriptures today but it is for your proper understanding 15 verse 6 he says for the lord your god will bless you just as he ha he promised you you shall lend to many nations i thought somebody would say amen. amen i said let me read it again you shall lend to many nations amen. it didn't say houses so it didn't say families he said to how many many nations somebody say nations. nations you know what it means to lend to a nation he said but you shall not borrow he said you shall reign over many nations but they shall not reign over you of course he that has the goal set the rule that's that's what that's what they say in the world he that has the gold gold sets the rules the bible says in proverbs chapter 22 verse 7 he said the rich rules over the poor as the borrower is slave to the lender whether you like it or not a rich man is always above why are you not talking huh 
He said, the Lord God shall bless you. Go back to that scripture, please. And as a result of the heavy blessing from the Lord, the Bible says, you will become so rich that you will lend to many nations and you will not borrow. As a result, he says, you shall rule over. There are countries where the laws, the legislature in that country is decided not by the legislative house, but by the rich people in that country. Is that true? Yes. Of course, Bill Gates will always send his aid to Africa. Is that not true? Malaria, this, that one, this one, that one. And you know, we Africans, are, are God, well, God is doing a work in Africa. But you know, we, our economy is, is in love with AIDS. We, never, we, have, we have not come to the point where we can produce for ourselves. So every time somebody says he's sending aid to Africa, hey, we just swallow it. And with that aid, they come to superimpose their rules and their laws. So if you collect their aid of $100 million, they will tell you you must allow gay marriage. And you have no option but to comply. That is the reason why God wants you to so prosper financially. So that you can rise above certain rules. And so that we can have believers who are blessed that will influence the rules and the laws that govern nations. And listen, by the time that kind of influence is genera generated, I hope you know that nations will bow to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Part of the reason why they are not submitting to our God is because maybe largely because we have not truly shown or displayed the supremacy of our God in terms of financial wealth and abundance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Am I talking to people today at all? God's understanding God's financial system. Alright, let's go into some practical aspects of this teaching now. I want to show you reasons why people suffer financial hardships. Reasons why people suffer financial hardship. We are, go, ha, we are going to dwell on this a bit. And as, as you listen, <laughs> um, I will encourage you to begin to ex examine and x-ray your life. If you find any of these reasons evident in your life, you may have found the answer to why you are going through that financial predicament. But let not your heart be troubled. Today, you are coming out of that predicament. In the name of Jesus Christ. Do you want to hear them? Reasons why people suffer financial hardships. Why people are poor. Why families suffer lack of financial resources. I have seven of them here. Number one. Lack of understanding of kingdom laws and principles. Lack of understanding of kingdom laws and principles. Lack of understanding. Lack of understanding. When your understanding is deficient about the laws and principles of the kingdom that make for financial abundance it could be a reason for why you will suffer some untold financial hardships last year we did a series on prosperity i believe last year kingdom prosperity and when we were talking about the principles we examined according to scripture that there, those principles are categorized into two that there are spiritual principles and there are earthly or natural principles a combination of both is what we call kingdom principles that the spiritual principles are what make for the availability of the resources for instance one of those principles has to do with favor and then the natural or the earthly principles are the principles that make for not the availability but for the sustenance and the multiplication of the resources so receiving it is one thing multiplying it is, an, is another and even sustaining it lack of understanding the bible says in luke chapter 1 verse 3 
Luke was writing to Theophilus and he mentioned something very powerful that I feel that we must contend, a realm we must contend to get to. He speaks about having perfect understanding of all things. Is that what is written there? It says, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of how many things? All things. It is possible to get to that place where you can understand perfectly everything that is needed Understanding is very critical. Very critical. The Bible says, in all thy getting, get what? Understanding. Knowing the laws is one thing. Knowing how it works is another thing. If, for instance, I ask somebody here now, what is the secret or the secret that the Bible gives us to enjoying kingdom prosperity? Somebody can say giving. Yes, that is one of the secrets. But how? What kind of giving will make for coming into financial abundance? Coming into financial prosperity? The how usually is, is the problem. And you know, the, the reason why we have that problem in church is because people come to church and they hear with their ears, but they don't listen with their heart. When the word of God is released, they don't listen between the lines to gain understanding. You ask somebody, have you listened to a message? He say, he has listened to it. I listened once. Sometimes you have to keep listening again to get understanding. You know, you receive understanding. The Bible says, the entrance of your word giveth light. And it gives understanding. You will know when understanding has come. It's like light. That shines in a dark room. All of a sudden your eyes are open. To spot where the problem is. And with possible solutions. By which to address it. Brothers and sisters. One of the major reasons. Why people suffer from financial hardship. Is lack of understanding. Of kingdom laws. And principles. Number two. Ignorance or incomplete knowledge. Ignorance. Or incomplete knowledge ignorance or incomplete knowledge somebody say but apostle is that not the same knowledge and understanding no they are not the same knowledge is information acquired understanding is comprehension received it is one thing to acquire the knowledge is another thing to understand it for some they don't even have the knowledge he said my people perish for what lack of knowledge not lack of understanding not lack of prayer my people perish why their knowledge capacity is deficit sometimes you need to ask yourself as touching the operations of the kingdom in your life what is the extent or sufficiency of knowledge that you have for instance you have the anointing how can the anointing bring healing to a person Sometimes when you ask yourself those kind of questions, you begin to rate the amount of knowledge you have and discover the reason why certain gaps are created in our life. You know, ignorance and incomplete knowledge is your inability to find the key that opens the door. While lack of understanding of the laws and the principles is the inability to know how to use the key that has been found if you are with me say amen. amen so finding the key you know jesus told them he says i give to you the keys to the kingdom The operations of the systems of God as far as the kingdom is concerned are captured in what we call mysteries. It is a mystery to the outsiders, to the unbeliever. But to us in the kingdom, the Bible says it is to you given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Those mysteries are keys, secrets. Finding the key is one thing and knowing how to use the key is another. I hope you know there are several kinds of keys. If you are opening a door, there is a hotel you go to that the key that they will give you is iron, iron key. You know those olden days iron key? Huh? The type that they use in opening shop. 
You know that type? Uh-huh. There's a kind of hotel you go to, they'll give you that key. That one is a motel. It's not a hotel. Is that true? Uh-huh. Sometimes when you open the door, you have to open gently with caution because one of the hinge may have fallen out. There are some that the, the key is half plastic and half metal. There are some that the key is a card. The first time I was given, that, I, I went to a hotel like that. I just stood there with the card looking at the door. I didn't know what to do. I didn't even know if this was key or not. I thought it was the number of my room. And they wrote the number of the, of the room on here. So I thought it was the number. So I was just waiting. It took me a few days to learn that key because sometimes I, I will lock myself inside. <laughs> Amen. Why there are some keys that are automated, you press numbers. There are some that are voice detect, they detect your voice. Huh? There are some, some gates that have sensor. I went to visit a wealthy man one time and while we were approaching the gate, all of a sudden the gate just opened. I say, are we safe? <laughs> Amen. Ignorance. Ignorance is bearable. Incomplete knowledge is the worst. Ignorance is that you don't know at all. Incomplete knowledge is that what you know, but what you know is not sufficient. Jesus said, be careful that the light in you is not darkness. Otherwise, it will be what? Great darkness. So many believers, their knowledge bank is incomplete. And if it is incomplete, it means, remember we said the financial systems are a combination of forces. Forces that you engage together. So when the forces or the principles that you know are not complete, you are going to mix up a wrong formula and you keep engaging and discovering that you are, you are, you are, you are getting the wrong result. Somebody said it is foolishness to keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. I'm telling you the truth. In fact, I believe that the body of Christ, we need, one, we need to really contend for the place of knowledge and understanding. Knowledge and understanding. Every operation of the Spirit of God in your life, you must have sufficient knowledge bank of it. Sufficient understanding. What you know is not enough. There is more. And you know what? Revelation is progressive. In Acts chapter 26, that's what Paul said. That Jesus appeared to him and told him that you will be a witness unto me of the things that I've shown you and the things that I will show you. So what you know yesterday may have gotten a level of resolve for you, but is that sufficient enough for today's problem? Lay your right hand on your head. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare access to knowledge and understanding from the word of God. As you study scripture from day to day, receive it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go on. Number three. Reasons why people suffer financial hardships. Number three. Unbridled desires. Or greed. Unbridled desires. Or greed. unbridled, uncontrolled desires, unhealthy appetites. I'm sorry if I'm shaking tables today, but I told you it's a deliverance message. Eh? So that's how it's coming. Unbridled desires. There are a lot of people that their desires have is, is the reason for why they are now perpetually poor. Uncontrolled desires. How can you have desires that rule over you? God gave man dominion over all things, including the desire that he has. That's why the Bible in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, pursue love, but desire spiritual gifts. When we have appetites in our lives that we don't regulate, we don't control, it is not bad to desire some of these things, but it must be under control, it must be under check. There must be a system a, a check a check mate around those desires that they don't overwhelm you so when somebody loves to lick ice cream for instance i love ice cream i hear what i'm saying i like ice cream 
Let me not say I love. I like ice cream. Because when you say you love, love, <laughs> that's control. It will control you. Huh? There are three stages of, of love. The third stage is addiction. When it becomes addic- addictive. That's why they say love is blind. You are now addicted. You can't do without that lady. Well, let me leave you. That we, are, <laughs> we are not doing relationship talk. Unbridled desire. Some other people, they have desire for wearing good clothes. It's a good thing to wear clothes. So you're not naked. But when that desire is not properly checked, that person is now under an uncommon kind of pressure. Dressing to impress. Buying clothes that you have not paid for. Which will lead us to the fourth thing, the fourth reason. Unbridled desire. There are other terrible desires, even gambling. When I say gambling, I had some people laugh. You don't want me to talk about it. Okay, I won't talk. Gambling. I heard that they've banned footballers now. I think FIFA has placed a ban on footballers internationally from gambling. If you are caught gambling as a footballer, you will be heavily fined or suspended. You see somebody earning 50,000 pounds, 100,000 pounds a week, yet the person is looking wretched. Why? gambling because that gambling i believe is a spiritual a get rich quick scheme somebody wants to play with 200 and win 40 million how 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 be careful when you approach a place that is painted green and red you know green and red i hear what i'm saying And the truth is, you see, if that if that was truly a means by which you can enter into wealth and financial abundance, why don't they have those green and red places in big where big men res, residential areas? Go to where rich and wealthy people stay, you will not find it. It is among the poor. You play 200. For the young men, their own is that one. For the elderly men, their own is pool. You know pool? You don't know pool? May God help you in Jesus' name, oh. May you not know pool. I'm telling you. You see, you see, you see a fully grown man married with children. Early in the morning, he's standing where there's a green and red symbol waiting for them. He will even help them open the door and sweep the place. Sweep the place. Because he wants to play, because he believes that with that 200, he can play a set of tickets and then stumble into millions overnight. Gambling has wrecked many people, wrecked many families. There are families that are in perpetual debt now. In fact, they, why I say perpetual is that they are borrowing to pay debt. And if you borrow to pay debt, you are just, it's like digging a hole to bury another hole. The one that's even funny is that somebody will come to church and he's sowing seed of faith, believing God that the gambling he did will work. How? No, you are laughing, but it's true. Some of you have siblings that are caught up in this mess, as I'm speaking now. There are things I will never do, sir. Even if I should backslide, which is impossible for me to backslide. There are things I will never do. Even if I backslide, there are things I will never... It it doesn't just make sense to me that you will use 200 naira and win 40 million. How? 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 And do you notice that those people, if they eventually win, if they win, they don't use that money for anything good. It's either they use it to keep playing because there is that feeling of luck that the more you play, is the more you will get. And then he, he hits one that didn't work out for him and then he loses everything. And then the person came with 60,000 in the morning and they have to give him transport to go back home. And he's going back home to meet a wife and, a, and, and two children. So when Apostle is speaking and declaring favor for financial resources, in his mind he's thinking that the favor will come through green and red. No, God does not work like that. The Bible says, 
It is the Lord your God that giveth you power to get wealth. True wealth, lasting wealth, does not come by that means. Unbridled appetite, unbridled desires. Paul said, All things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. He said, All things are good, but I will not be under anyone. I remember years ago, somebody taught me a very funny principle. He said, Jonathan, anytime you have money, take yourself out. Go and buy chicken. Buy this, buy that. Eat. May you know, say, you don't chop your money. And I said, Amen to it. And I kept dreaming of when that money will come so that I can go and give myself a temporal relief from poverty. But as the Bible, as the word of God began to transform my mind, all those desires fell. To a point where when I could afford those things, there was no desire for them. I'm not saying it's not good to take yourself out. <laughs> but, but I mean, you see, you, you know, there's one thing with abundance. Knowing that you have enough, eh? it has a way of even controlling, it, it has a way of creating contentment, creating control. There are things you will not rush for. Number four, debt. It's pronounced debt, but you know I'm talking about debt. D E P T. D E B T. Sorry. B T. Debt. Debt is one of the reasons why many people, many believers, suffer from financial hardships. Debt upon debt upon debt upon debt. House rent, school fees. Now, even the food you borrowed money to buy, you have not paid. The keke man that takes you to work every day, you are still owing him. Debt upon debt. And you know, this debt is like a spirit. The more, if you, if it's like, it's like mud. How many of you know mud? If you fall into a mud, the more you try to get out on your own, is the more you are sinking inside. That's how debt is. That's why I say the borrower is slave to the lender. You will always feel that you will need to keep borrowing to meet up. Debt is a very disastrous spirit. In fact, debt is slavery. Because you can't do anything with your money. There are people, some may even be listening to me right now, that for six months, they have not spent their salary completely. Because as it comes, there is a measure that is going somewhere. They are always owing debt. Why can't you live within your means? You know the truth is one of the answers to content to debt is contentment no matter how small the bible says in first timothy chapter 6 it says godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into this world and we will surely take nothing out it says for if we have food and clothing with this we are content buying a car that you don't you can't you cannot afford you have to keep paying for nine months okay now that you have finished paying for nine months are you still going to borrow again to fuel the car a brother gave me a very powerful principle and I think I want to walk by that. One of our brothers, he said something to me and I picked it two years ago. He said that he believes that you are ready to buy a car or you are ready to own a car when you have enough to buy two of that car. What it means is you have enough to take care of the cost and maintenance of that vehicle. Otherwise, enter a purple. It doesn't reduce your anointing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Depth. Number five, laziness. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, ma. Laziness. The unwillingness to take responsibility. The unwillingness to seize opportunities. Laziness. You want everything to be done for you. You are not ready to stand up and take responsibility. Remember, we spoke about dominion. And we said one of the signs of... Uh, what, what, what did we say that the dominion mindset? Part of a dominion mindset is the willingness to take responsibility.
I think there's a place in Proverbs. I read one time. I don't know where it is. He said, a lazy man will not even roast what he brought as meat. He said that the lazy man will say that there is a lion in the street. He can't go out. There's a lion in the street. On Dambwa Road, there's a lion in the street. He said, ah, Medu is too hot. I can't do anything. So he sleeps from morning to evening. Thank God for the heat this season. You can't even sleep. Is it not true? Yeah, no, you sleep and it will cut your sleep somewhere. The Bible is not quiet about the danger of laziness. There is no way you will be lazy and expect to live. And you know, lazy people, respectfully speaking, are the people that have this entitlement mentality. If you check their needs eh, or their prayer points, eh, the things that they want God to do for them, no, next week now we'll come for miracle service. I will say write prayer points. You need to see the prayer points that some people write. Some of those prayer points, if you see it, eh, the, the force of the prayer point can stone you to your house at one sweep. Number one, give me an NGO job where I'll be earning at least five hundred thousand. Number two, give me a wife by September. That's a lazy man. Oh. That's a lazy man. Number three, give me a car before December. Number four. By two years time, I want to be a manager in my organization. How about lazy? That's the prayer of a lazy man. No, lazy people are known for wish. They are wishes. They love to wish. And as it is said, is if wishes were horses, even if wishes were horses, many lazy people will not be able to buy it. Too. Laziness. This is not an insult. It's the truth. It's the truth. Your unwillingness to take responsibility. God has mandated that for every man on the surface of this earth, time and chance will happen to you. A season will always afford every man where the favor of God will come on you. Now it is what you do in that season of favor that will determine whether you are going to change or transit where you are to where you should be or remain there. Time and chance will happen to them all. But favor plus laziness, perpetual poverty. That's the truth. There's no prayer that can solve it. In fact, I was listening to John Maxwell this week. He was talking to some people. And here's what he said. He said, there is nothing I can do for a lazy man. He said, there is nothing you can do. There's no prayer about it. Apostle, come and pray for me. Anytime I read, I fall asleep. Stand up. Stand inside buckets. Read. Or look for chuku chuku tons. <laughs> it's not easy for everybody. Oh. You will not believe that this teaching, as simple as, as you are seeing it, it gave me sleepless nights back to back up till this morning. Because now everybody is jumping into ministry, thinking ministry is now the easy. My goodness. In fact, if God had told me that this is how hard it is, I would have asked God, can we debate? Can you? I have a brother. Call him and leave me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ministry is hard work. To affect a generation, to shape the mindset of people is not easy. To lead, to be a spiritual leader is not easy. And as you keep rising, with great power comes great responsibility. So the capacity of your work will increase. There's no place of rest. Even the money and the blessings that will come, you will not even have the appetite to enjoy it. I say I like ice cream. I don't know where last I took ice cream. It's not like I can't afford it. When you are you are you you, you stay in one place for five days in this heat. Anybody that is suffering from that spirit of laziness tonight be delivered in the name of Jesus. Let's move on quickly. Number six, impatience impatience this is another reason why people suffer impatience unwillingness to wait wait there is something called the law of process thank god for the favor of god it can happen overnight but before it happens there is a law of process that you must engage it takes time to grow motivation can come at an instant but growth takes time just because you received a powerful sermon and you feel highly inspired doesn't mean that the results will come immediately, no. Somebody say, but the Bible says the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet when he spoke. 
Yes, he set you on your feet to walk. Process. The Bible says, because of this impatience, it says many of many people have pierced themselves with sorrows. Let me tell you the truth. Genuine and lasting wealth. I have come to believe and I'm convinced it takes time to be built. There is you can't take you can't take me otherwise of that conviction. No matter how the quick rich scheme is, I will not buy to it. I believe that true wealth takes time. There are investments that many people made that promised to multiply money in a short time. Blindfolded by those investments and now they are already in debt. Impatience. You listen to me. If you want to be wealthy and enjoy financial prosperity, you need to learn the law of patience. Process. Learn to wait. Even when you can afford certain things, it will be good that you delay your gratification. Push it ahead. Thank God you can afford business class. Keep flying economy first. Just wait. Rather than beginning to feast and enjoy the little returns that are coming, it is time for you to make further investment. Build a system in such a way that a, a time can come where you stop working for one year and you will not go broke. If you have not gotten to that point, then you have to keep on working. You know what, what rich people do? There's something they, they do. They call retire, retirement. They retire. Somebody says retiring at 45 years. And goodness me, he's retiring to, to wealth and fortune that will outlive him. That's because they took time to work. Many of the world's billionaires you see today, they didn't stumble into it overnight. That's why I will never buy or subscribe to Yahoo, 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 or what they call it. Um, ritual money. No, impatience. God will give us grace to be patient. And then number seven, lack of strategic relationships. Lack of strategic relationships. Lack of strategic relationships. Somebody once said, if you have five friends around you that are poor, then there are six people that are poor, plus yourself. And it's sadly true. If you have five wise people around you, you didn't count well. There are six of them there, including you. Show me your friends and I will tell you who you are. Isn't it? Uh -huh. The Bible says, as, as in water face answers to face, so the heart of a man with his friend. That's just it. There is no way one of the systems of financial abundance in the kingdom, put it and take it anywhere. Relationships strategic i'm not talking about parasitic relationship you know those kind of people that they are friends for benefits friends for food is that true when this one has money they hang with this one when they drain all the money they jump that's not the kind of relationship i'm talking about i'm talking about strategic relationships you have built with people people who are either like-minded like you walking their way to enjoy this financial abundance that is made available in the kingdom or perhaps people who are better Situations in life can happen. Coincidences can happen. Everything that Job had crashed in one day. How did God restore Job? Go and read Job chapter 42. The Bible says his siblings, his friends, they came back and each of them contributed. Relationships. So if, you, if you don't have strong and strategic relationships in your life, where if anything should happen and you suddenly grow, go broke, they can help you to stand. Then brother, you need to pray. You need to pray and start walking. Even in this city here, we have stories of people, indigents, who were wealthy at one time and all of a sudden, everything just went off. No relationship. In John chapter 5, what, the man that Jesus met at the pool, what did he say? He say, I have no man to take me into. May that not be your story in the name of Jesus. Lack of strategic relationships. Strategic relationships. Strategic relationships. People that are ready. People that are like Jonathan. That will make a covenant with you. 
that not on their life will you ever suffer reproach or hardship all of a sudden your house gets burnt and everything is destroyed and one of such kinds of relationships they will call you and say what happened this is what happened you say okay just come we have a two bedroom for you somewhere just stay there sleep there this night tomorrow we'll discuss the rest you need those kind of people let me tell you the truth a man of God once said in this kingdom who hates you does not matter it's who likes you there are some people that you can have just one of them in your life and they are equal to a nation I used to share a story one time I went to preach somewhere and when I went there God said don't collect anything and all the money was a military environment all the money they were bringing thousands thousands recharge card thousands ah, ah. I said God did you say I should not collect God said don't collect that's why I was pushing everything away I was not smiling no because the last money I had when I went to that church was 100 naira, and I put it in offering you know as the man of God as the guest speaker you can't offering time you have to put offering so I bounced with it and I put the, rem the, the remaining of, of, I was already prepared to trek home then somebody took me home that evening God brought one person who brought a sum total of everything relationships relationships are we getting blessed we still have quite a long way to go okay God grant us grace God's basic financial systems are revealed in scripture God's basic financial systems are revealed in scripture I will give you a few of them God's basic financial systems Number one, blessing. Or you put the blessing. The blessing. What is the blessing? The blessing is a spiritual empowerment to prosper. A spiritual empowerment to succeed. It is a supernatural resource. A heavenly resource. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful multiply replenish the earth subdue it and have dominion in Ephesians 1 verse 3 the Bible says blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing to every child of God firstly when God created man upon man was conferred that blessing and for every child of God in the kingdom the blessing is our heritage our heritage in Christ Jesus so the first system that you must engage as far as finance is concerned in the kingdom is the understanding of the blessing that understanding is what will stop you from rushing to do any and everything to be wealthy the reason why there are a lot of believers who are hustlers in court I'm not against diligence or hard work but the reason why we have this hustling mentality in believers is because they don't believe or understand in the blessing that it is natural as a believer that you are fruitful and that you multiply. The part of the justice is that a shining light that shines more and more to a perfect day. Somebody say, I am blessed. You know, in the I am confession, one of the, one of the sentence there is, I am the blessed. Are you hearing me? That mentality will stop you from struggling to make ends meet. Ends that will never meet. Why? Because you are blessed. It's a spiritual empowerment that is able to translate into financial abundance. It is able to cooperate with your mind, cooperate with your life to produce money and financial resources around you. Somebody said the blessing. Now it is important to know that God gave it to man first though. Man first. Not believers. Man first. That is the reason why even unbelievers prosper somebody didn't hear what i said let me repeat it again that is the reason why even unbelievers are prospering you know why the blessing is was first of all conferred upon man witty inventions ideas that would translate into abundance how much more a believer that is in christ jesus
In fact, the Bible says the memory of the righteous is blessed. That means this your mind that you carry up and down that has refused to produce for you has the potential of turning you into a city. What did he tell Abraham in Genesis 17? He said, and I will bless you and multiply you and make nations out of thee. That is the mindset that the Hebrew people carry. Every Jewish person, that's the mindset they carry. That is the reason why they seem to be the richest on the earth. If you go to a city, for instance, where you find Jewish people living, they live like a community. They have their school, they have their synagogue, they have their bakery, they have everything. So the money circulates around them. And they have this mentality that because they are the seed of, the, of Abraham, they are blessed. They carry the blessings of Abraham and anywhere they go, they will prosper. Those are Jewish people. How much more you that has been redeemed in Christ Jesus? He said, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. So that through his poverty, you will become rich. I know that you are not seeing it physically around your life. But it is, true, it is good to operate with that mentality that you are blessed. It means that you can never be stranded. It means that wherever you are, there will always be. I always will say it that if you find me anywhere around you, if you were stranded, start thanking God because you will never be stranded again. Provision will come. I'm telling you by experience. By experience, I have traveled without money, and before I arrived, I arrived with money. Not when I was a preacher. It's a mentality. There was nothing in my pocket. But I had a blessed mentality. I remember one time when we were still in school, traveling for holiday. And after paying the bus fare, there was nothing, no money in the account or in the pocket. I entered the vehicle. As the journey was going, I was speaking in tongues and communing there. When we stopped somewhere to buy something, two ladies came down and came and met me. They said, what do you want to eat? I said, don't worry. You know, those days when you are hungry, you convert the hunger to fasting. So that there will be spiritual benefits. Are you hearing me? And those of you that are students or those of you that once in a while, I'm giving you, so you don't waste it, you convert it. They came and met me. They said, what do you want? I said, no, 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 I'm okay. My stomach was telling me, if you, if you better close your... <laughs> they insisted. That's how they went, bought things, brought it back, gave it to me and gave me money. Where I was going to, I arrived 12 midnight. Somebody came from nowhere and picked me to the house. Though I was lacking, yet there was a mindset I had. Paul would say, though we being poor, yet making many rich. It's a mentality you work with. That you can never be stranded. So you will not pursue after riches like the people of the world. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 2.26, To the man that is good in the sight of God, he gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy. He said, but to the sinner, the labor of gathering and collecting, that he will lay it up for the man that is good before God. There's no need using your life to chase after vanity. No. Your destiny is too precious for that. You must understand the mindset of the blessing. Did he not say that whatever you lay your hands to do shall prosper? Did he not say that he will establish the works of our hands? He suffered no man to do them wrong. He rebuked kings for their sake. Say, touch not my prophet. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Psalms 105 verse 37. He brought them out with silver and gold. And there was none feeble among them. They labored for 400 years plus. But when they were coming out, Egypt's wealth was converted to them. If God allows me, maybe somewhere in this year, I will teach you, there was a revelation God gave me during the lockdown. The seven systems for the end time wealth transfer. If God allows me, I will show you. Somebody say, I am the blessed of God. Say it one more time, I am the blessed of God. That's the first system you must encounter. The system of the blessing. It is your birthright. It is your inheritance. You have been empowered. And because of that, you have an advantage. You have an edge. Every other thing you do will just cooperate with this spiritual empowerment you have received. Number two, productivity. Is someone getting blessed? Productivity. Genesis 8 verse 22 says, While the earth remains, 
seed time and harvest cold and heat winter and summer day and night will not cease it is a universal law that God has placed that there must be a season of sowing and reaping this is what governs what I call the law of productivity now that you know that you are blessed it is important that your life begins to produce value that is well packaged and that is sold or delivered or distributed to a targeted consumer base that there is something you have that is valuable or there is a value you can create in your life that can be converted to goods and services and exchanged to bring you into financial abundance it's called productivity it's a law that God has put as far as the earth is concerned in fact the Bible says in Isaiah 55 verse 10 to 11 we say as the rain comes down from heaven and does not return back but it waters the earth so that it will cause it to bud and bring forth that it might bring forth seed to the sower and bread to the eater so when God blesses you part of it is for your consumption the other part is for you to engage productivity that you are able to invest it that you are able to trade with it you are able to do something with it that can be packaged into goods and services and delivered to a target consumer base and when you are able to do that there is no way money will be far from you there's always something every man has to deliver for some goods and services for some do you know that even information in fact one of the things that sells the most in our age is information information so even preaching as a man of god eh if you understand the law of productivity it can translate into financial abundance for you that's why there are some that are rich and there are some that are poor productivity seed time and harvest is a universal law backed up by divine ordinances God said in Psalms 89 verse 34 he says my covenant will I not break neither utter the word that has come out of my lips so it is a constant as far as the earth is concerned now let me show you something about productivity Genesis 1 29 some of you my God somebody is about to get wisdom now some of you will learn a, a, a very powerful principle for investment watch this scripture it says and God said see I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of all the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you it shall be for food two things there herb yielding seed and three with fruit that has seed in itself the herb yielding seed speaks of grains you know all of these grains rice maize beans all of that you see that those grains if you want to have a bountiful harvest you need to sow a lot of it you need to plant a lot of it and they don't take too much time just months to be harvested is that not true that's one kind of investment those are what you can call short time investment short term investment but the tree that has fruit with seed in itself you are talking about for instance mango tree orange tree coconut tree apple tree some of those fruits when you try to plant the seed i hope you know that after two years some have not even grown or even budded those are long-term investments some can even take up to 10 years but by the time it starts producing it doesn't stop producing so it means that that kind of investment is a system that takes time to build but has the capacity of constant and continuous replication so in the law of productivity there are two kinds of investments a man can make when we are talking about seed we are not just talking, i'm using agricultural term but it can be anything it can even be knowledge that there is a skill or skill there is a skill you can have and you can trade with it for it to begin to produce for you instantly 
For instance, a young lady who knows how to sew dresses, primarily she is a tailor, isn't it? She can begin to sew dresses and gain financial returns from it. Or she can decide to rather go and improve on the knowledge she has, broaden her knowledge in the field of fashion design, and grow to a point where she is not just the one sewing the dress. But she creates the patterns, the trends, and then has tailors that will sew for her. And then after a long time, that kind of person can open what you call a fashion house or a fashion brand. And stumble into uncommon wealth. You can, you can practice any of these two. It works with the information you have. It works with the skill you have. It works with the goods and service that you have. Remember the parable of the talent. To one, he gave five talents. To one, two. To one, one. And the Bible says they went and traded their talent. But one buried his talent. The law of productivity. So if you are not gaining financial returns, it could be that you are not producing anything. There has to be something in your life that is of value. There has to be something in your life that is valuable. And you see, not just of value, but of value that is relevant to your immediate environment. The problem with many small and medium scale business people is that they don't, they don't do what we call feasibility studies. They don't look for the need in their environment. They just jump into business because everybody is doing business. Because your friend is selling wrapper, you too want to sell wrapper. No. You have to look for the need in your environment. What is valuable enough that will be relevant to your immediate environment? And then cash in on that and go to work. This is not a business class. I would have given you different kinds of business investments you can do. But I believe this is bringing wisdom to somebody. Yes, you know how to do cake. That's wonderful. But do you realize where you are living now, nobody patronizes cake again? Maybe because what is needed now is no longer cake. Now, because of the heat, what they need is cold zobo. So are you ready to go and learn how to make the zobo and come back so that you can package value that is needed there? And tell me how you will not get customers. The reason why it looks like the prayers that are prayed or, or offered on us is not working is because the, the prayer is supposed to, the spiritual should work with something that your life produces. Even as a man of God, as a minister, your ministry must be relevant to your immediate environment. So you see a man of God prepare a very long intellectual sermon and he's wondering why people don't come to church or why they don't listen. It's not because they don't want to listen. But you've checked the life of those people. They have real-time problems facing them. That is more than that intellectual doctrine that you have brought. Solve those problems by the anointing first. They will listen to you. Okay, there are many music ministers around. But do you know you can carry a grace that when you sing or minister, people are healed instantly. And when they begin to notice that about you, People will not go to concerts because of the name of the concerts. They will go if they see your picture there. I remember those days when I, I was still playing the keyboard. Like this man is playing. Well, I knew as much as the level I knew. But I discovered that that time music began to evolve. Music began to go spiritual. People were no longer listening to music for entertainment alone. There was a spiritual relevance that was attached to music. So those, those days we would have concerts not to just come and show our skills. But people wanted a place where they could come and worship God. And the presence of God would be real. So I, discovered, I decided, okay, as a psalmist, I will not just build skill. But I will learn how to transmit the anointing that is in me through my fingers. And yes, of course, I was never paid playing the instrument. But the reward I got was more than people who were paid. Those days when we used to be in school, there was a time where, I'm saying this with all humility, please, okay? I'm not marketing, I'm just giving an example. There was a time where they would, they would tell people that if you need a spiritual keyboard, look for. I went to play one program. 
And when I finished, instead of people to go and sow to the man of God, they came and they were dropping the money in my suit. <laughs> and when I finished the service, I didn't wait for anything they would give me. As the one I had was enough, and I just left. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yeah. Productivity. Productivity. The human body is a compendium of seed. There is the seed of your body. There is the seed of your hands. The Bible says whatever your hands find to do, do it well. There is even the seed of your mind. Some of you cannot do anything but your minds, your minds are blessed. You, in, in 30 minutes you can cook up great business ideas. Now, can't you sit down and learn how to write a business proposal? And then all those ideas, translate them into different proposals. Open a website or open a social media account and transact with it. You don't have products, but you have information you can sell. Some of you, you can't do anything, but you can write. Do you know you can take the message of a man of God and transcribe it to a book? Tell me when that book sells on Amazon, if you will not have your share. There is something you can do. It's just laziness that will not allow us to expand and, and you see there are certain levels of favor when you see God delaying it from coming it may be a sign God telling you there is more capacity that you can gather productivity somebody shout productivity we don't have time let's hurry number three giving another system giving are you enjoying this teaching at all thank you for your time giving that's another system After all is said and done, you must comply with the law of giving. Oh, if you want to see true kingdom prosperity, I discovered that part of the problem is that many people, do, first of all, don't believe in giving. That's why they even struggle with tight. Tight oh, that God says is my own. It's like licking an orange and eating the seed of the orange. Has there, is anybody is anybody here that's eaten the seed of an orange before? Is it sweet? So when you eat your tight, that's exactly what it is. The whole orange was your own. The seed was God's own. You ate your own and ate God's own. That's the reason. Just because, just the way the seed is bitter. That's why when you eat your tight. Say amen. amen. Giving. Very powerful. You would need to know the various kinds of giving prescribed by scripture and which one to engage to bring which result. Do you know that not all giving brings the same result? I wish I had time. Well, listen to the teaching, the grace called giving. I think we did a teaching like that last year. Please get that message and listen. Media people, please give them for free. Okay? The grace called giving. Go and listen to it. There are different kinds of giving. We've even done teachings on first fruit. The blessing that comes to tithing is different from the blessing that comes to seed faith. The blessing of tithing is the blessing of preservation and divine protection. Malachi 3 verse 10. He said, and prove me now if I will not open the windows of heaven and shower for you blessings. There are seven blessings there. He said, then I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. That's protection from losses. He said, and, and your vine shall not cast her fruit to the ground. In other words, you will not have a premature destiny. There are other kinds of givings. There is seed faith giving. So you are believing God for something. You are believing God for a harvest. So you communicate your faith through a seed. Very important. You will not give tight and be expecting a harvest. No. Tight is for protection. But if after giving tithe, you don't subscribe to giving seed, it's like building a fence around an empty land. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I know I'm touching people today, but I told you this message is deliverance message. So seed faith is the kind of giving you, you sow because you are expecting a harvest. There are other kinds of giving. There is charity, giving to the poor. The reward for that one is mercy. Just like you show mercy to people 
who cannot help themselves a day will come in your life in the future where you are stranded god will raise help for you read psalms 41 verse 1 to 3 you will see seven blessings for charity giving however when a man wants to encounter the power of god or he wants the anointing to produce certain things in his life he will, you should not go and give charity and think the anointing will work no there is another giving for that that's why we say systems that other giving is now the giving to your prophet or honor he that gives a cup of water to a prophet shall receive a prophet reward we don't understand the meaning of that prophet's reward in first timothy chapter 5 17 18 he said let the elders that rule well among you be treated with double honor especially those that labor in word and doctrine galatians 6 6 he says that he that is taught spiritual things should communicate in all things to he that teaches him so there is also a giving you give to your man of god or to those who have blessed you in the word and in spirit that kind of giving activates the anointing it activates divine intervention you won't get that one if you give charity no it won't work there is still also another giving called sacrificial giving that many of us give so in sacrificial giving you are looking for power or promotion or you are looking for a cause or a particular limitation to be broken in a bloodline that's the one to engage do all the charity giving you know if there is a cause it will do nothing to that cause if you don't believe me ask jesus for god so loved the world that he what gave his only it was a sacrifice he gave his only son until today he's still reaping the harvest sacrificial giving is is it's not a, it's not the kind of giving that brings a one-time harvest no it may take a while but it, it, it can bring something that has generational impact one son he gave now many generations later he's getting many sons so you see a politician wants to win election and he doesn't have any sacrifice on the altar he's joking are you hearing me if he's your uncle tell him i said he's joking after paying all the campaign people and buying posters and everything go and look for a sacrifice and place it's a law it was uh, it was existing before you came even god humbled himself to that law did god come and tell the elder okay let just let people be saved i will pay you back later did he do that so somebody say when god give me the job or when god did the promotion i will give you are joking with all due respect you are joking this is the reason why i've seen many people remain stagnant at a point no there, no, there is no need for that no i thank god for the grace of god on my life i thank god for my own personal labors but brothers and sisters there are levels and heights in the anointings that have risen to freely because of sacrificial giving let's rush we are at what now number three and then finally for now let's let's just bring it here for now number four value that's another system value the law of transformation creating value that is needed and useful for transactional purpose the blessing number one that is one of the systems the financial systems number two productivity number three giving number four value creating value that is useful for transactional purpose and then number five dominion we'll explain dominion another day i want us to finish quickly now so we can pray finally how do i activate these systems how do i get these financial systems to work for me number one you must have a life of total surrender a life of total surrender a life of total surrender lord i give you my heart 
I give you my soul I live for you oh Lord every step that I take every moment I'm away Lord have your way in me Lord I give you my heart I give you my soul I live for you, oh Lord, every step that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way. You want to activate God's financial system to work for you, the first principle is a life of total surrender proverbs 23 26 he said my son give me your heart and let your eyes observe my sin god is never committed to a man that is not totally surrendered and you are only totally surrendered when your heart is involved and i hope you know the god we are talking about jeremiah 17 verse 10 I, the Lord, such at the heart. You know, <laughs> this God we serve, you can't deceive him. Oh. He knows when your heart is completely given to him. You can even come and give your heart to Jesus and say the salvation prayer. But heaven knows whether your heart was totally surrendered or not. When it comes to the issue of finances in the kingdom, God is particular about your heart. Where a man's treasure is, there your life, your heart lies. Total surrender. God told me this years ago. He said, Son, the power to take up in the kingdom is in the power to lay down. You know, when they are doing taking the wedding vows, they will say, Do you love fully wed so so person? To have and to hold. And God began to explain to have and to hold to me that you can have something doesn't mean that you have grip on it. To have means you have received it. To hold it means you have a grip on it. So sometimes God can open you up to a financial explosion in a season. Make no mistakes. It may be a test. It may be a test. Let's give him small and see whether he can handle it. Take one million. And he went and revived all his friends in the club. No, it's revival now. It's revival. One million. The, the apostle he used to come and greet and kneel down. Now he will stand and say, Ah, yeah, yeah, Papa, how now? Papa, you just send us your account number, you know. Your heart. Even in the occult, there are dimensions you can't rise to in Satan's kingdom until you sell your soul. How much more with God? The reason why many people, it's not like God doesn't want to bless you but your heart there's something with your heart that god has been trying to work work on in the last five years even the test of giving is for the heart to see how malleable you are how will you go to a place and preach and god will say don't receive anything that they give to you it's a laborer not worthy of his wages he said you shall not muzzle the ox when he tread the corn you know you can quote yourself you use scripture and quote yourself out of the plan of god many more times i've discovered in the kingdom if god wants to raise you as a financier in the kingdom or bless you financially he will test you and the test is to prove if your life is totally surrendered would you if they put god one side and silver and gold on another side who will you choose you just forget about the songs we sing wait until the opportunity comes wait until 20 million is before you and all you need to do is tell a white lie Wait until you see 100 million check. Sometimes there are jobs you will have to say no to. Not because you don't need the money. But when you weigh and discover that this job will take away God's place in my life. You will have the job and lose your spiritual life. What's your choice at that time? And I'm talking to us particularly young people. 
it is nothing it is nothing for god to raise you as a millionaire there is a a, a, a plaza in abuja they call banex plaza how many of you know that place in abuja banex plaza is a very wealthy Igbo man that has a bishop bishop victor he became a billionaire in his 20s in his 20s and when god had finished establishing him in wealth god called him to ministry so he, he will enter his rolls royce and go for evangelism with megaphone and be preaching how many of you will do that rolls royce oh. i didn't say toyota i said rolls royce that door that that kind of car that the back the back door opens like this okay or may back mess this bench you know that mess this that the headlamp is like it is eyeing you if you are poor don't come near me that's how the car is if you are poor don't come how many of us are willing to be surrendered to god your family is waiting on you some of you are going to be so blessed the wealth you will carry can feed communities nations but when are you going to truly surrender your life when are you truly going to allow god to take first place that there are doors that will open in your life and you will personally shut the door not because it is not good but because it is not of god remember what jesus told the rich young ruler he came to jesus and said good master jesus said no one is good except god so the reason why you can call a thing a good thing is because it came from god that means if the affliction came from god it is good for we know that all things work together for the good of them surrendered life i'm telling you have a heart that is totally sold out to god so god can ask you to empty your account god can keep you perpetually working in an organization at a level where you know you are already above just because of a covenant he has with you god can keep you from some opportunities until a time and you are willing to hate wait why because your heart is surrendered to god first the bible says for we brought nothing to this world and it is certain that we will take nothing out of it many people have mortgaged their christian experience because of money gold and silver many people so as a pastor will you keep preaching Will you keep delivering the word of God even when no seed is coming? You go to minister in the program as a musician and they tell you, thank you, God bless you. You know the meaning of that? After the ministration, you know, when they say God bless you, you know what it means? Will you still worship? Will you still serve God? Or you only do the worship on stage? Now that you don't have food in your house for about one week, you've not worshipped at all. Say God, when you provide food, you will get worship. But then we used to sing, I won't trade you for silver or gold. I won't trade you for riches and gold. Why? You are, you are my everything. In my life, oh. There are moments when I, I have had to look above certain rewards. There are things that have come to me, opportunities that I've had to look at it and walk away. Many times. Many times. In fact, recently I'm running out of prayer points. Two nights this week I knelt down to pray for two hours. All I was saying, Lord be glorified in my life. It is when your life is totally surrendered eh? God will make you a spectacle to your world He will put wealth in your hand That people will look at it and say No God, how about you are not fair There are things God will do around your life That people will seek explanation And the only explanation they will get is the result of those things That's why when you see God engrace men Or just anoint men and lift them from the backside Don't, don't criticize find out where they are coming from find out the deals they have made with god why will god give abraham the whole earth find out the altars and the sacrifices he has made a surrendered life number two a transformed mind a transformed mind 
you must contend for wisdom for understanding for light for knowledge romans 12 2 says be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind proverbs 4 7 wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and in all you're getting get understanding <laughs> it a, 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 an anointed man without a transformed mind might still amount to poverty there is something called the power of the mind the power of a transformed mind the greatest miracle of a believer is the miracle of a transformed mind for the unbeliever their greatest miracle is salvation for the believer your greatest miracle is transformation that your mind is able to expand capacity in knowledge Look at that scripture we read, Ecclesiastes 2, 26. 26. It said, to a man that is good in the sight of God, he gives wisdom and knowledge. Build capacity. Buy the truth, the Bible says, and sell it not. How many of you have libraries that you have built that your children can come and look at and be challenged to have a studious life? How many of us have libraries that can cost up to 50,000 and above? But we have jewelries that are in hundreds. We have gold. And somebody, you know, a, a dear lady will tell you, hey, it's investment so that when I'm broke, I can sell the gold. You will sell it and still be poor. The greatest investment is here. This mind. This mind. But you will only have that investment when you are able to engage the mind. Remember the widow? Elisha told her in 2 Kings chapter 4 he said go and borrow vessels borrow vessels speaks of capacity gather capacity thank God for what you know but what you know is not enough go and build capacity what you know is enough for two people but for a nation it's too small how do you think that you keep working and any salary and then you become a multi-billionaire and then be able to do what all the dreams God has shown you don't you think you will have to expand your mind? Don't you think that you have to rise to a point where you create systems of labor? It is the mind. You have to, you have to contend for transformation. Let me tell you the truth. The, the strength of the anointing in the life of any believer is directly proportional to the amount of insight contained in his or her mind. You can be so anointed and then use it very little because of how much that your mind knows. Even in the anointing in scripture, you see that different versions of it, improved versions of it was expressed in scripture because of the mentality or the mindset of the people. When each Israel were to leave Egypt and cross the Red Sea, he stretched his rod, the, the sea opened, they all passed through. When it was time to cross River Jordan, the priest entered and the water opened up. Are you seeing improvement? When it was Elijah's time, he took his clothes, folded it and struck the water, it opened up. When it was Jesus' time, he walked on water. The anointing is there, it's already, you have it. But you will see greater manifestations of it when you engage your mind. If the mind of unbelievers can create what we are depending on today. The person that created Facebook, is he a Christian? But ministries are depend ministries have touched the world, touched nations because of Facebook. I'm waiting for when we can create our own faith book. The world is still waiting to see the production of a transformed mind. What we see is the product of the, the, the mind of unbelievers. How about the enlightened mind of believers? We are still waiting for it. Maybe that's why Jesus has not come home. There are things that will have to manifest some of you are here in your dreams god is showing you different kinds of engines with which you can design cars that will be locally fabricated but because nobody is doing it around you you sat down and folded your arm what you want to do is open bed ninja shop Haba. a transformed mind After this night, somebody must contend for transformation. You must pay the price. You must be ready to sit down and study. Sit down and learn. 
we are this generation we should be careful with the microwave activity that we are, we are about to be inflected now even the things of the kingdom they are, we, we, are, we are gravitating to that point where we want everything to be sharp sharp no time for God you want to manifest and shake nations but you can't spend time in the secret with God you can't stay with God for five hours but you want your name to be everywhere the man that God told I will bless you and make your name great and through you all the ends of the earth will be blessed he walked with God for 25 years there's time you must sit down to study you are called into ministry you must sit you must develop a studious life even if you can't read books go online look for apps or videos that summarize the book go through it you are a leader you don't read you are leading by the leading of the spirit as the spirit leads are you joking Abba, that's why church is not interesting again because people are tired of coming to hear the same thing they want to come and hear what will challenge them I wish I had time this night but we have to pray number three obedience and diligence obedience and diligence obedience and diligence Deuteronomy 28 1 to 2 you can put that as a scripture Isaiah 1 19 to 20 if you are willing and obedient you shall eat the fruit of the land Isaiah 1 19 to 20 be obedient to these laws make a practice of them be diligent in what you do brand your value intelligently brand what you have seek consistent improvement number four build strategic relationships build strategic relationships build strategic relationships relationships are not gifts they are investment you must build it with time if you want people to be interested in you you'll have to be interested in what concerns them a man who wants friends proverbs 18 24 a man who wants friends must himself be friendly build strategic relationship and then finally so that we can pray engage the prophetic engage the prophetic are we blessed tonight wow what a long teaching can we put our hands together for ourselves amen that you sat down to listen means that you are serious about your life about destiny in fact that you stayed this long is a sign that you are ready to make progress when i was preparing this teacher it took me nights 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 and i knew it was going to be long but if this is the truth that will change your life and take you from where you are to where god wants you to be then you made a wise investment what was the final principle i gave how do you engage the prophetic It's very simple. Look at what happened at creation. Do you know that if you understand, the prophetic engages the supernatural. And it is important to know that the supernatural controls the natural. The heavenly controls the earthly. Please listen to this now. This last part, many of you, this is going to be a, a secret that will work continually in your life. The spiritual controls the physical. Everything you see here is a dummy and a slave to what is in the spirit realm. The prophetic helps, makes you engage the spirit realm in your favor. When God created the earth, here was what he did. The Bible says that the spirit of God moved upon the waters. He waited for the move of the spirit first and after that the bible says and god said so to engage the prophetic you must understand how to deploy or how to generate spiritual energy and then through the power of spoken words 
deploy creativity to make that energy manifest so when i begin to pray for you what i'm doing is activating the the prophetic the power of god is already present but just because the power of god is present doesn't mean that that which you seek which is financial abundance can immediately translate in your life no it is power that needs to be converted electricity is generated but for you to use electricity you need to convert it many of you will need to learn how to go beyond just praying in tongues to taking advantage of the energy you generate when you pray in tongues learn to speak and activate the power of creation through words when god spoke he knew what he wanted and he spoke them definitely let there be light he didn't just say anything should come at random no learn to use the prophetic to deploy the advantage that will bring financial abundance in your life for instance favor can bring a timely intervention of financial resources but do you know that favor will not just arrive because you have a fine face do you know that via the prophetic you can activate favor the bible says he daily loads us with benefits he daily loads us so when you finish praying in the morning don't just leave that prayer place before speaking into the day and programming the favor and guess what do you know that you can program it with time and it will meet you exactly at the time what did elisha say by this time tomorrow till tomorrow i do it oh i do it so many needs around and I need money. Of course, I know I have value that can be transacted for, for money. Of course, I know that I have what I, I produce that I can exchange for money. I have everything physically. So all I need now is the advantage of the prophetic. So after praying, I know that there's enough energy gathered. The Spirit of God is in that place. I begin to specifically speak. If he say daily loads you will benefit, that means that it is supposed to happen this way. That every day you should experience a miracle of financial favor. And if it has not come to you this week, it means that you have areas that you have not brought. But today, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that all the benefits that are yours, that has escaped you, by the power of the prophetic, we shift it into this week for you. Learn to engage the prophetic. Learn to speak and declare. There are times when you are stranded and everything around you is tied. It is your mouth that can bring you out of that place. When Jonah was stranded in the belly of the fish, you know what brought him out? It was his mouth. He said in Jonah 2 verse 9, I will sacrifice unto the Lord and I will pay my vow. The Bible says next verse, And the Lord sent the fish and it vomited Jonah on dry land left for dead in the belly of a fish his mouth brought him out bishop oedipo say i am what what my mouth can declare could it be that what you have been seeing in your life is what your mouth has been declaring the first thing you say when you wake up in the morning hey no money i will go do i never pay school fees could that be could it be that the cycles around your life and it's the same thing happening again and again a cycle of lack and poverty could it be because of your words a man's belly scripture says shall be satisfied by the fruit of his mouth i don't know about you but I've, I've decided that i will enjoy the fullness of financial abundance that god has for me like apostle joshua selman will say i have divorced poverty i have waved it goodbye and the holy ghost has held his hand and forced it to wave me back i have discovered that it is my heritage to be rich and i i will not stop until that scripture is fulfilled that you will learn to nations i don't know about you after all he spoke to abraham alone he said i will bless thee this night you will have to stand up with a sense of responsibility and take your destiny in your hand and decide that all that you suffered your life has brought an end to it that your children will enjoy the things you suffer for the bible says they shall be the repairer of the breach the restorer of the path that you will stand up and declare that this poverty in my lineage it will come to an end because of me great men did not become great because of the precedence before them they became great because of their decision you have to stand up and say enough is enough you forget about where you came from forget about your background it doesn't matter christ in you the hope of glory 
Stand on your feet. We are going to pray this, this evening. I want you to hold the hand of your neighbor. You have heard so much tonight. Can you in just one minute pray in the spirit? Activate everything that you have heard tonight. Just hold the hand of your neighbor and let's just pray in the spirit for a minute or two. Lift your voice, lift your voice everywhere. Light has come to somebody. For somebody, what you have heard is like fire in your bones. What you have heard has brought a total revolution in your life. A change has come to you. Arise, scripture says, and shine for your light has come. My life is changing. My life is going from glory to glory, from grace to grace because of the things that I've heard. And the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet when He spoke the words to me. Shila Paracatala de Liberdos, Separacatala de Paracatala Paracata, Separacatala Paracatala Catala Paracata, Separacatala Paracate, Separacatala in Jesus name we pray two prayers and we will close tonight listen poverty is a spirit but the bible says in James 2:26 that as the body without the spirit is dead a spirit needs a body or it needs natural circumstance to work with for some of you all the things that were listed as the reasons why people go through or experience financial hardship some of you have found one or more of these things at work in your life and the spirit of poverty has taken advantage of these things maybe lack of understanding of kingdom principles or maybe ignorance or incomplete knowledge or maybe unbridled desires or appetite or depth whichever they are the spirit of poverty seems to be partnering with these things to bring you into perpetual hardship financially you want to pray tonight and say by the reason of the light that has come forth from the word of God, by reason of what I've heard, every of those reasons around my life that has allowed poverty to reign, I bring it to an end tonight in the name of Jesus. And I break out of that cycle into a place of abundance. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. You made all things new, yes, you made all things new, and I will follow you. Oh, my God. 
In Jesus name we pray. Finally I want you to pray listen. Finally in a minute or two I want you to pray and curse the spirit of poverty. I beg you to pray. Are you hearing me? Listen, listen to me. In 2014, I don't know if I shared a vision I had with you one time at the Ecumenical Center. I told you I saw spirits that look like skeleton. That was the vision God showed me about the spirit of poverty. It's a spirit, believe me. When it comes upon a man, it will frustrate any and every effort so that you just keep living in cycles. The debt keep continue, it will continue to increase. Everything you do seems to be of no avail. There is a spirit that needs to go. As the body without the spirit is dead, it is time to separate your life. Your life is the body. It is time to separate your life and your family from that spirit. For some of us, it seems to be transgenerational. Some of you now, you are the only good thing happening in your family. And if God does not help you break that spirit of poverty, your, the needs in your family is almost plunging you into poverty again. Are you ready to pray this night? I want you to open your mouth and curse that spirit from your life, from your lineage. Thus far have you come, and thus further shall you not go. This night I settle it with destiny. Let the stronghold of poverty over my life, over my family, be broken forever. Be broken forever. Be broken forever. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. So that through his poverty, you might be rich. Somebody cry. Somebody cry. We cause the spirit of poverty. We bring an end to life. We bring an end to financial action. We break that cycle. We break that cycle. to speak over your lives before we close please lift your hands I want you to take these words they are coming with power for, in fact for some of you deliverance is coming to your life to your family this is how we correct things in the kingdom by the power of the spoken word the Bible says Jesus spoke to his disciples he said if you hear these things happy are ye if you do them you have heard the word of God tonight. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The grace for diligence. The grace for obedience. To comply with everything that you have heard. Receive it in the name of Jesus. From today I break the power of laziness over your life. I break the power of laziness over your life. Receive the grace to be diligent and consistent. In the name of Jesus Christ.
by reason of what you have heard as your hands are lifted I declare over your hands the Bible says I am the Lord that teaches you to profit that in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of the I declare that your hands will begin to produce from today I force your life to begin to produce from today produce value that will be transacted for financial abundance produce value that is relevant for your society in the name of Jesus Christ It said, but a spirit of excellence was found on him. I want to pray over your lives right now. That spirit of excellence, the ability to do things excellently, to be flawless in result, to stand out and dominate by excellence, let that grace rest upon your life from today. From today, everything you do will carry a touch of excellence. It will carry a touch of excellence in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible speaks of the low cost, but it says, I will restore to you the years that the canker worm has eaten, the locust, the palmer worm, the caterpillar. The locust army is a spiritual significance of poverty. The invasion of the spirit of poverty. Listen to me, brothers and sisters, before, we, before I speak. It can come in any way. Some, some uncommon kind of losses are actually the attack of the spirit of poverty. Some strange kind of losses. Strange, you, just fall, you just fall victim of fraudulent scams. Strange things that you can't, you can't imagine just happening around your life is what I call the invasion of the locust army. I want to pray over you and cause the spirit of poverty. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ. You are standing here on behalf of yourself and your family members. I declare over your life and your generations. Let the power of the spirit of poverty be broken. I arrest the spirit of poverty from your life from your family and from your lineage I command that spirit to let you go forever let you go forever let you go forever in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing chains in cycle chains in cycle every cycle of lack every cycle of deficiency Every cycle of poverty, I cause that spirit. I command those cycles to be broken now. I command those cycles. I break those cycles now. I break those cycles now. Be over forever in the name of Jesus Christ. And in the name of Jesus Christ, by the mantle of favor that is resting upon your life, I declare that after tonight, a door is opening over your life. Step into uncommon places of financial abundance. Step into places of plenty. Step into places of increase. I bring you from a place called Lodiba. To a place of abundance I bring you from the place called Lodiba to a place of increase to a place of prosperity let that grace rest upon your life now rest upon your life now in the name of Jesus Christ God is telling me to say it again to 13 people again now i know next week is miracle service but i want you to go and come back with testimonies on that service i'm speaking to 13 people here the mantle of favor is resting upon your life look at what he told saul samuel he said you shall meet three men at the tomb of rachel 
He said they shall carry with them three loaves of bread and a goat. He said they shall salute you and give you two loaves. That grace of favor that causes uncommon access to resources. I don't care wherever you are in life and I don't care what you do. But by the mantle of favor that is resting upon your life, I shift you to a place of abundance. I shift you to a place of abundance. Let that grace Adoka Paragataya. The grace of favor rest upon your life now. Rest upon your life now. Rest upon your business. Rest upon your handwork. Rest upon your career. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your life will never remain the same after today. Exodus 3 verse 21. He said, and I will give you favor before the Egyptians. And it shall be that when you leave, you shall not leave empty handed. I declare for anyone that has been in a place of lack. You have projects in your hands to execute, but there are no resources. Nobody seems to answer your call. Between now and tomorrow evening, let the wind of favor blow around your life. I speak to your helpers wherever they are, north, south, east and west. Whoever needs to answer to you so that that project can be executed, so that your vision can manifest, I force them into your life this season. And I declare that you are returning back with a testimony. You are returning back with strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands and give the Lord praise tonight. Lord, we thank you. Blessed be the Lord, God Almighty, Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, be glorified for what you have done in our lives tonight. Your children will truly walk in higher dimensions of financial abundance. From today, the key has been released to them. And they will go and do exploits. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. I know that we have overstretched our time. And I really appreciate your patience. But while you are standing, let me give an opportunity quickly. No Jesus, no life to start first of all. So forget about even enjoying the financial benefits of the kingdom. All standing please. If you are here and you know that Jesus is not Lord and Savior over your life, let's give you an opportunity to say yes to him. Yes, God wants you to be wealthy. But the greatest miracle is that your soul is saved. He died and rose again so that your soul can be saved, so that you can be justified before God, so that you can be declared righteous, so that you can receive the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace by which you reign in life. You are here, you want to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. Please could you just raise your right hand and I'll pray for you. Or you want to rededicate your life if there is any amongst us. You want to rededicate your life afresh. You want to mean business with God so that God can entrust to you kingdom resources. Please raise your right hand and we'll pray for you quickly. God bless you. I see a hand. Can we celebrate God? I see another hand. Just keep your high right hand lifted. Just keep your right hand raised up. If your right hand is raised, please walk to the front quickly. I'll pray for you. Walk to the front quickly. Jesus is giving your life another meaning. Can we celebrate God for them, my God? Pneumatic, celebrate God for souls. All to you. Keep clapping, they are coming. All to you. Thank you for saying yes to Jesus. Keep clapping. I give it all to you. Now stretch your hands towards them. 
If there's anybody that needs to join them, please join them quickly. I'm going to rush, the, rush them to take the prayers. If you come after the prayers, you are not saved. Alright? So please, if you need to join them, if the Lord is convicting you right now, if the Lord is talking to your heart right now, please unashamedly walk to the front. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me in the presence of men, I'll be ashamed of you in the presence of my Father and the holy angels. Pneumatic, stretch your hands towards them and pray for them. Those of you in front, whether you are rededicating or you are surrendering your life of flesh, Jesus wants to give you a new meaning. Put your right hand on your chest, if you may, and repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my sins. And I believe that you died and rose again, that I will be saved. I receive you into my heart and I confess you as my Lord and Savior in Jesus name Father we pray for these ones we declare by the authority of the word of God that their sins are forgiven and we declare that from today they receive an impartation of eternal life we ask that you seal them with your Holy Spirit of promise we thank you for giving their lives another meaning give them a new vision help them to serve you to grow to love you all the days of their lives in jesus mighty name we pray